good morning um i'm glad that um after a long journey that has started um, from september um we are gradually getting to the end of um, our experience sharing on a fundraising and a proposal writing i'm excited about today um generally i'm going to talk about experiences that i've had over the years um on small grants from applying for smaller grants to larger grants and um, how we have moved from trajectory from very small grants over the years to very larger grants um i want to start by first of all saying that as a foundation chapter you would generally come across a lot of grants some of them will be quite large and some of them will be f fairly small whilst others will be small um, i have had a lot of um, experiences applying for grants from smaller to very large grants um, as little as two thousand dollars to 60 million um, dollar projects. I, I have had the privileges of belonging to some of these projects over the course of my career. And let me say this, if you have foundation organization, please, it makes easier for you to focus on smaller grants. Um, the reason being that smaller grants get the trajectory and the um, requirements of smaller grants are um, fairly um, um, okay as compared to larger grants that require um, a lot of scrutiny. Um, a case in hand was um, when I applied for a grant from the Mitsubishi Foundation, I recall, um, by then I was working in the States um, in Atlanta with Greening Youth Foundation. Um, what the grant taught me was that irrespective of who you are, even with smaller grants, you can apply and fail. Um, and this also brings to notice of the issues that we've been talking about in terms of um, um, adhering to donor tenants, understanding donor projections, and understanding your country priorities. I, I basically applied using a concept from Liberia and wanting to do a school guiding and project. It didn't fly. But ultimately, the idea was was one that um, touched the hearts of the, the donor. And uh, I think we succeeded in getting um, $11,000 um, to pilot it, even outside the grant scheme. Um, over the years I've been involved, I, I have had a cause of applying for 50,000, 60,000, 100,000, 110. And I've won grants um, ranging from all these um, brackets so very fairly large ones, 3 million, um, 4.5, and even 60 million. Um, I wouldn't say that um, normally grant writing required consent and effort from the team. It's not an individual putting your, your, your head around it and try to come out with some magic. The individual can lead, but normally to require effort from the team. And let me say this as a foundation NGO or a foundation chapter, I will encourage you to start looking at foundations. Like I, in fact, I shared more than 30 of, of those um, grant making organizations with Sheila and I, I recall she has shared them with you. Um, what I want you to understand is that you cannot just jump at the start and start aiming at $3 million. It doesn't work that way. Um, you may have all the expertise, but um, for instance, if you are applying for grant with the USAID, one, you will need to have a very strong presence. And normally USAID will favor um, organizations that are registered um, from the US, incorporated in the US. And so normally what we do is, as a foundation chapter, what you can do is to partner with some of these organizations and just have components of it and implement. 
Um, I recall a case in hand um, was when we applied for the dedicated grant mechanism. Um, it's almost, uh, I think, $4 million um, one of um, a project from the World Bank. And in fact, we brought all the team together. We had a very vast team and we applied for this grant and we we're very certain that this is the grant that we, we're going to win. And lo and behold, another organization won. And sometimes you look at our capacity and compare it to that organization and you think that, look, we've been untreated, we'll be treated very unfairly. But upon a diagnostic of the report that came back from the World Bank, I realized that one, um, we were very, we are lacking certain foundations. One, we didn't have a constituent. We didn't have a presence at the community level. Do we have done a lot of advocacy, we've done a lot of research, we've done a lot of implementation, but we were not known at the community level. Um, people have heard our projects that have been implemented by our organization, but they didn't have like an, a presence. And, and this was one of the bigger challenge for us um, as an institution. So going forward, we had to come up with a strategy that we will solidify our presence at the, at, the, at the community level. And another case in hand was a grant that we applied with the EU um, for about 4 million um, euros. And the funniest thing was this grant, I, have, I was part of the team of consultants that did the formulation exercise for this particular call. So it, it, it's, it was very easier for my organization because the core itself, I was part of the consultant that formulated it. So being part of the team that was leading in, in designing this project was quite, quite easier. And we, we, we submitted our, our application and, and EU got back to us and said, look guys, we can award you the contract as of now. For reasons being that we, we think that your expertise in these areas, especially when it comes to matters of Greek, it's not that solidified as compared to other organizations. So if it, if we were to be core forestry, uh, I think we would have gone through. And so what I'm trying to say is that something you can you can apply for thousands of grants. And I recall a, a period in between 2017 and 2018, we we virtually were running on two projects as a big organization like Crop and Boss, and and everybody was worried. And but of course, it it wasn't as if we were not applying for grant. We would apply and apply, we got rejected, we got rejected, we got rejected and we'll continue applying. And, and trust me, within a span of um, um, 2019, we had with all these grants to the effect that waiving um, capacity of staffs had to be enhanced. We had to bring in new staff because we overwhelmed with, with, with projects. As of 2019, we're running close to 11 projects from two to 11 projects. And much of them were, were, were being run on budgets and on average budget of 500,000 a year. Some of them had budgets of $100,000. And, and so the grant cycle is very tough. Um, you will need to start from somewhere to somewhere. And there was this grant with the Critical Ecosystem um, Partnership Fund that I led a team to apply. In fact, I was part of the, the enhancement workshop when, when this grant was launched in Ghana and, and in, in Liberia. And, and I knew these guys that were part of the assessors. So I led my team, we, we put in the bid and everything seems good. And lo and behold, it ended up we didn't get the grant. And I was like, what? I mean, even with, with this knowledge and with all these people that I know, and, and this taught me a lesson that look, the grant cycle or the grant value chain is very, very competitive you cannot just do anything and expect to get grants. I am, by this saying that, as a foundation chapter, let's start looking for grants that have been anchored by foundations. We have the RANA, the Mitsubishi Foundation, I've shared a couple of them, and trust me, you would be able to win those grants very easily than those that will require you to bring audited accounts um, some of them will require you to bring audited accounts. Others will require you to bring um, certain documents that as a foundation chapter you didn't have. 
Others would want you to share your past projects. If you have no past projects, how do you share some of these experiences? Um, so please, I, all that I'm trying to say as we conclude on this workshop, start looking at yourselves as chapters within all these links that Sheila has shared. Can we identify a particular donor? I was glad when Daniel said, um, Daniel Deborah of, of Ghana said, look, I've been tracking International Tree Foundation. I mean, their grants are fairly small, but you can easily win it. The ultimate objective there is to do tree planting. Please, let's, let's familiarize ourselves with some of these donors. Look, as I said, Dropping Boss, as of 2017, we were just running two projects. As I speak to you, we ran over 10 projects. And, and sometimes we are even overwhelmed. We become very choosy. We select the projects that we want to implement. You don't, you can't just throw us, you can just throw projects at us. And because of the networks that we have built over the years, sometimes you are there and, and a, an organization that deems you um, a true leader in the forest sector wants to just partner you. And I have said this, we are more than happy to partner ISDF Ghana. If we are willing to go forward as a chapter, then we need to start developing some of these networking, networking opportunities. And so in conclusion, as foundation chapters, let's start with small. I'm not saying going big is not good, but please let's just start from small. My experiences in the grant sector tells me that the smaller the grant, the less complicated it becomes. Dropping boards have implemented grants that are 25,000 per year. Um, I mean, under our AX partnership with the Denmark um, University of Copenhagen, we had an AX project that ran on annual budget of less than 100,000, sometimes 50,000, 50, sometimes 25,000 a year, depending upon the allocation at the time. We accepted this when we had nothing. We applied for this when we had nothing. We have in the past applied for uh, FO grants and to the tune of 60,000. 60,000 cannot even take care of our overheads. Um, um, for two months, but we accepted some of these grants when things were tough. We started from this low level, and today we are man managing projects that are over 4 million euros, some 2 million euros, and, 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 and so forth. So please, all that I plead from you is that let's start doing something, and let's start small. It doesn't mean that you can't go there. You can't be that top. It just simply means that you are measuring yourself based on your experiences and based on your based on your opportunities that are there now. You would have opportunity to grow to the top. You have opportunity to get larger grants. And look, I am looking forward to some of you becoming full-time employees of ICF chapters. I gl would gladly want to serve whether project coordinator, project manager, and an ISDF chapter. If we get our funding objectives right, and trust me, we are getting there. We have the potentials to get there. I've seen a lot of chapters with very intelligent people. I mean, very intelligent, competent people that are capable of moving these chapters forward. Please, let's take these things very seriously. We can grow this chapter to become the chapter that we envisage in the next couple of years. And I believe that we are on the right track and I believe we will get there. Uh, thank you very much. And, and as I've said, I am always available to assist and I believe in unity and with the same purpose, we are able to get to that goal that we have set for ISTF. Thank you very much. And I wish everybody a, a fair and, and successful grant application um, and processes. It is my wish that um, in the next couple of months, next couple of years, I would hear a lot of chapters making in rules in the funding landscape and implementing bigger projects across our landscape. Thank you very much and God bless you.